Yes, sir, baby, on the Radar Radio. Yo, two special guests in the building. Their new album is out now. Division is in the motherfucking building. What's yeah, up, y'all? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I need to tell you how much of an honor it is to have y'all here. Um, morning After was an, was a very important part of my college experience. Oh, yeah? Um, still... And I want to give you guys some of your flowers because I don't know if y'all realize, like, I'm 26, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all realize, like, the impact that your music has had on my generation like in my college years like and through that time like when i would even be riding like the bus to um to my early morning like internships at power 105 like i would have you i would have y'all's music on y'all's music was playing in all the dorm rooms like crazy. it was crazy man so i want to give y'all some of y'all flowers before we start this interview today because what you guys have done um i mean i like giving people their flowers when i see them so I just want to give y'all that because no, i, I think that y'all have had a, a huge impact and whether y'all realize it or not like it's been, it's, y'all have had a hell of a run so far. Appreciate that. Thank a lot. you. Thank you. That means a lot. Of course. Appreciate that. How have y'all been feeling? How's this, how's that been going? Today's been a crazy day for you, I know, but. Yeah, no, but we feel good, you know, with new projects out, um, you know, new, a new point of view that we kind of wanted to put out into the world, you know, with the, the idea of working on my karma, mm. you know, um, which is, you know, being better than you were before, putting out a better version of yourself than you've been. You know, in hopes of that being what you get back. You know, if we can kind of put that into the universe and put that type of positivity out there, then you know, um, I think we would have done something something good for our generation. Have y'all actually been working on y'all own uh, y'all's karma? <clears throat> yeah, all the time. I think we're we're constantly messing up and then <laughs> evaluating where we're at and then trying to go back again and, and figure out how to make things better or even just uh not get into the same types of situations mm. are you more are you, you like kind of sucked your teeth a little bit when i asked you that you was like <laughs> no i'm saying no for, because you know most definitely that's 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 something that i i you know i've been doing but i i assume it's gonna be gonna be continuing to do for mm -hmm. the rest of you know my time just I don't think that's, I think that's like a never ending task, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. that's something that you should never be like, okay, I did it. Like, I'm good now. Cause if that's, if you're at that place, that means you're not taking a long enough look in the mirror to see, you know, where else you could, you could improve. Right. Um, and that's what this album is. You know, it's a lot of, you know, honest looks at where you're at, where your relationships are at, where you're, you know, your what you've been putting out into you know, the universe. Yeah, into the universe, into the 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 people that you affect mm -hmm. and impact. You know, every day. What was like? Was there like a moment <laughs> for you guys? Like, especially because since we're on the topic of karma, is there like a specific moment that you guys could think of where you guys were like, "Ah, shit, yeah, I need to start working on my karma." In particular, uh, I don't know if it was one specific moment, um, because I think I can look back through my life. And whether that be family, whether that be some shit in the streets, whether that be something with my friends, whether it be, you know, dealing with things that matter to me, I can always look back and say, I could have done something better. I could have done better about that. I shouldn't, maybe I should have handled this like this, or I should have thought that one through a little bit more. Mm. So, you know, I, I can't say any one specific moment because I guess, you know, we're, we're humans. We've been flawed from... From day one. Right. From the day we're born. Yeah. I think what I what I love, like, you know, like you said, this album is extremely honest, right? And, you know, even going, like, the singles leading up to it, I don't think, like, people would have expected, like, the journey that you take people through on this album. Because mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, obviously we talk about, like, the toxic stuff on the project. But then it's, like, the way that you flip and you put people in their bag, too, at the same time. Like, you know, shout out Rob on the boards because Rob was a, was one of the first people playing the album in the studio and shit mm -hmm. like that. He was like, yo, he's like, how can they do this toxic shit and then go right back to putting people in their bag? Like, the duality <laughs> and how you guys were able to balance it on this project. I think is very like impressive, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, if you take like an honest look at yourself and talk about this karma stuff, and it's like, all right, we got to talk about the good stuff and the bad stuff. But you know, the way that it was blended, I don't think it, I've seen it or lit, heard it been blended like this well before. From you know, taking the honest look at yourself and being like, okay, toxic, I'm toxic. Ah, this isn't that. Then. So when you say toxic, what like? What are you referring to? What do you take as being toxic from the records? From the records? <laughs> Look at him smiling in the back. 
Oh, I mean, we could talk like this thing. Like, if I get caught, you like, obviously, mm. we're talking about that, right? Would yeah. you not consider that toxic? No. No, I think that's extremely honest. Okay. If I get honest. caught cheating, it doesn't mean I, I don't love you. You know, it doesn't mean that there's things we got to talk about and we right. got to get into. But I, I don't. I wouldn't say that's toxic. He's not saying if I get caught cheating, you got to deal with it. Mm. You know, that would be if toxic. If I get caught cheating, I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's not saying that. I think toxicity is, I, I like to think of toxic as like, you know, it's the stuff that's in like poison and stuff. It's meant to hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas this is a record that's meant to bring a conversation to the table where you guys can actually be honest about things. Because the real question should be, OK, if it's not that you don't love me, what is it? And then you can get into the actual like um, mentalities and perspectives of individuals, as of men, of mm -hmm. women, of whatever it is. And that's what it did. It brought a whole bunch of conversation to the table. Right. It's just it took a while in the beginning because the shock had to kind of wear off. But at the end of the end, at end of the day. When you talk about cheating and you talk about, you know, if I get caught and, you know, what that is, it's, it's more a conversation about the, the, about the ego. You know, when you think about it, it's like, that's really why people do this shit. It's not because, oh, I woke up today, I don't love my girl anymore, let me go cheat. That's not what people are thinking most of the time. Mm. It's, I went out and I did some bullshit that was super selfish and super self-indulgent, probably because I wanted to stroke my own ego. I wanted to feel desired. I wanted to conquer something new. I want to prove to myself, something. whatever the reason might be. It might be different reasons for guys and girls and for each individual it's different, you know, but mm. at least the topic of the conversation should be there. Yes, some people sometimes cheat when they have fallen out of love. Yes, that can happen. Yeah. But that was a song that speaks to the perspective of there's a bunch of people that do and that are still in love with the person that they're with or still love the person that they're with they just have something um that they need to work out with themselves that's why you can never um you can never like make someone stop you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you can never be like oh if it's this girl then he won't cheat if i get someone so bad or so rich or so cool then he won't. It's like, no, we, we've watched it all, all year long, all, you know, our whole lives. How many times have we, we see the internet in, in, in shambles because they're like, oh, how does he cheat on this person? Right. It's see, like, like the blogs and shit all day It doesn't matter long. who it is. It doesn't yeah. matter who you are because it's not about that. It's the person that had something to work out with. Yeah. It's not about, oh, this person wasn't fine enough on Tuesday, so I cheated, you know? So... That that was the conversation, and and funny enough, even though most people don't hear this, the the verses on that song, the way I I I, I wrote that, it it wasn't even about somebody that was cheating, it was somebody having the conversation with their partner, mm. and the partner had been is wondering if they're cheating, and so now they're like, hey, what what's going on here? How did everything that you liked about me turn into the stuff that's making you? insecure you which know? you guys kind of also showcase in like the video too with right. the phones and exactly and whatnot you know everything you liked was is the stuff that you now is now causing problems how it went from oh you know you 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 a fly nigga when you got here it's like i, I went from you liking me because i dressed well and then now it's you know where are you getting dressed up to go you know it's those kinds of conversations you know and that happens for guys and girls right a bunch of guys do that to their girls you know, they want their girl to start dressing different, acting different, not going out with the same friends. Oh, you're too friendly. Why are you always smiling? With you, you liked me because of my personality, and I was always, you know, had a good energy about me. Now you want that to switch. So it's, it's bringing about all these these things that we deal with in today's relationship. But right. it just put it in a way where you know it caused a little bit of a, a stir. Undertone to it. <laughs> I think what you uh, what you just talked about, where it's like um, where it's like um oh, you liked me until X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's become one of the bigger topics like that I see on Twitter or even like you know when you talk about the record and whatnot, and it's like, okay, like if you liked X, Y, and Z about me, but now that we're in this position, mm -hmm. you now it's like, change. oh, shit, but I don't like X, Y, and Z about that. Or you're, the other person doesn't like X, Y, and Z about you anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it's like, okay, you go to the studio all the time to record and work on this project, right? Uh, shorty's like, shorty's like, oh, that's incredible. Like, I love you, whatever. Ah, ah. And then, you know, you're like 90% done with this project. You're putting your all into it, pulling like 18 hour, whatever it is. And it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you pulling these 18 hour days? And it's like, are you, you going to make time? time when are you going to yeah. have time for me? Exactly. Yeah. It's all the same. It's everybody can find a way to have a conversation and, and, and relate to that. And 
you know, this whole album is us bringing what we're dealing with today outside in our relationships to to uh, a tradi a more a, a little bit more of a classic R and B traditional R and B um, vibe. You know, we wanted to give the stuff that felt like real classic R and B, but we had to do it talking about what we're dealing with today outside because we're not dealing with the same shit from before. This isn't this isn't uh, you know the era where the boys to men songs and stuff like that would be raining as much as people say, oh, we miss that. It's like, no, that's not that's not really what's going on, though. You wouldn't really want to hear that. You guys would probably look at that and say that stuff is is, is whack. That's why even at the end of the, the video for the last video that we just did with um, with Jagged Edge, mm -hmm. you know, we're outside, I'm in the rain, I'm outside her, her crib, and she's like, oh, this nigga's crazy. Because that's really what actually would probably happen right now if I was to go stand outside of somebody's, right. you know what I mean? It's, it's not like what's cool back way. then is, is... It's not the same, not the same thing. Anymore, yeah. Plus, the human experience has changed. You know, pe women are different, men are different. Our, the way we interact with each other, relationships are different. <clears throat> you know, everybody feels that they got a million options. People don't stay and they don't work through things anymore. Mm -hmm. Love is... is is harder to find real real things is harder to find you know things that you can actually feel is hard in the time when things are just numbing you out right and i feel like you you but you especially see that when you like scroll through twitter and it's just like everybody's got their own think piece about you know Everything. how how a man should be or how a woman should be it's like nobody's like always on the same page everybody just have they everybody's allowed to have their think piece now you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying instead of just and they're speaking to it's not like people are speaking to each other anymore. It's now people are just speaking to, just throwing it out to the internet. So nobody's yeah. like, you know, yeah. having those personal conversations exactly. that lead to like actually like a real connection. A just real kind of anything. Meeting that middle ground that you're supposed to meet on too. Nowadays, it's like you could go tell almost any girl to go on her, you know, platform and say, one red flag and I'm out. <laughs> and a million people re retweet that. But it's like, that's not how a relationship's going to last. Hmm. The minute, the minute something's wrong, you're gone. <laughs> like, that's not, you can't get forever out of that. You know, you got to learn to work through things, to stay through things, not just, okay, he did this, forget it, I'm back in my DMs now. Right. You know, so it's just, you know, we're dealing with different things now. So we wanted to be real about it and be honest about it so we can all take a look at it. And if we want to change it, let's change it. Let's work on our karma together. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the more like open records on the project was the inter, was your interlude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, like I, I took a big chunk of it. I just wrote, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it's like, did I ever tell you about the person that ruined me? And that's probably the reason that you feel like you're not getting through to me, so on and so forth. Like, mm -hmm. and I think when I was even going through Twitter, like, and like, just kind of like, cause I, I like reading people's receptions to the record. I like mm -hmm. seeing people have to say, um, and a lot of people were saying like that, that was definitely one of the most, relatable and most kind of like home hitting records in the sense of like, you know, people going through that same type of experience and that same type of, you know, heartbreak and trying to speak to someone else, like speak to, you know, whoever, you know, that they're, that they're talk, conveying this message to now. Right. And it's like, how do you convey that type of message and how do you try to get through this is like, yeah, I love you, but you know, this the person that ruined me and so on and so forth too. Yeah. Um, the interlude is, is um, you know, I mean, we've been hearing a, a lot about that. I guess that record over the past oh, people few been, days. Yeah, yeah. People are people are really having, you know, their moments to it, and you know, taking a look at, you know, what the things are that might make them who they are today, which is which is dope, you know, um, and you know, the whole the idea of like maybe. Maybe some of this stuff makes me hard to love, you know? Maybe this stuff made it hard for me to love, too. Um, I think we all have things like that. I think everyone's got barriers and walls and, um, you know, some are higher than others. Some have been through a little bit more than others, but we all have our reservations. I think today, especially, we all have our reservations. That's why people are so quick to just leave things when something's wrong, because they're immediately reminded of the trauma from something before. Mm. Yeah, that I felt that one. <laughs> I definitely felt that one because it's like, um, and also 
social media doesn't help because you know, like I said, like people will point you in a certain direction, be like, oh yeah, if you see a, you know, the red flag, and it's like, oh that one red flag, that goes back to the red flag thing we were just talking mm -hmm. about. You see the one red flag, and that red flag reminds you of a previous red flag, and then it's like, ah shit, that's the same thing that happened to me last time. Mm -hmm. I right, let me just hop off the ship. Now. And that's where the the working part comes in because like the last time you saw the red flag, did you do any work on yourself, or did you figure out? What about the red flag, red flag needed to be addressed? Mm. Or you just like left that situation being like, oh, never again. And then the next time it came up, like, how do you address that? Right. You know, and that's where I think these type of conversations are happening because of the records and because of the, like, because of the, the different disagreements that people are getting into with the songs, because now you're forced to just be open with it. Oh, you don't like it because what? You know, say it out loud. That's another thing. Like a lot of things aren't being said. It's just like a quick tweet. It's a quick post. It's a quick whatever. But it's not like a real conversation that led to something, mm. you know. And that's I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we even chose to go with if I get caught first, because the conversations that people were having were getting so deep that somebody would play. We play the record. Somebody would have this extreme opinion. We'd leave the room. Forty five minutes later, they're like, you know what? I think I kind of feel like. What they said works for me, you know? We're like, oh, you switched your opinion? Like, I've never seen that happen before, you know? Yeah. Especially for such a strong opinion. And that yeah. was happening so often, even when the song came out. There were so many strong takes and so much almost like backlash. And then three, four, five days later, you start to see yeah, people the being The same like, accounts are coming back like, nah, it's a bop though. <laughs> or, and it's, just like, <laughs> it's like, nah, I get what he's saying. Yeah, no, it's, 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 yeah, he's keeping it real, but you know, I just don't, I just don't like the fact that you know, because this happened to me or this happened, you know, it, it's all these things, but it, it's, 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 it's growing pains. Yeah, mm. and social media has made a lot of men versus women discourse, where Body. it's not like it's not us against them. Like we all still have to figure it out. You know, we put out these records and women would be like, this is how men think. And men are like, but w women do these things too. Like, it's not like specific to us or it's not specific to you. Like, mm -hmm. we're all trying to figure it out. And I think as we're slowly like getting past those layers of defensiveness, people are actually like taking in what the like real, you know, like the real message is behind the working on your karma. And that's why I was asking you, like, what do you consider to be toxic? Right. Because so many people, the second they hear something they don't like, they're like, oh, it's that toxic shit. But it's like, is it? Or is it just honest conversations that people don't want to get into? True. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like when I said that, you know, like that too, mm -hmm. but then also, you know, like I, like I think of like the interlude and like the interlude is like that for me really made me think about like myself and like what I've been through and shit like that too. You know, like talking about the, the having an honest look at yourself and thinking about, okay, what have I done in the past? And then how has, what is, or what have I experienced in the past, I guess is a better way to say it. Mm -hmm. And how does that affect how I do these things now? Or how, do, mm -hmm. how does that affect how, if I'm dating someone now, does situation X, Y, and Z from four or five years ago, even though it's four or five years ago, maybe in the very deep back of my mind, does that still affect how, sure. we, how, we, how we interact with people now? In like a, in like a, um, a romantic sense, or even in just kind of like a person-to-person -person sense, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I think that 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 is really cool how you guys were able to start opening those type of conversations too. Because like you said, like you know, I feel like if I scroll on TikTok or Twitter, like I said, it's like a, it's a guy talking about a woman, <laughs> it's crazy. woman talking about a guy, like oh here. this is that, oh if they do this, oh this person does this, or you know, or like oh this sign does this, and it was just like <laughs> yeah, but we all go like we all like women cheat, men cheat. Women do this, men do this. Like we yeah. all do these and things. And we all have terrible responses. We have, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we haven't learned the the like necessary ways to like approach situations. And social media has made it terrible. Like yeah. social media has made it so that anytime there's something wrong, people just run to their phone and just tweet some crazy shit. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's such a reactive thing that if you read like like you were saying, like if you read the hot takes on Twitter, it's it's wild though. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just it's just nonsense. It's just pure nonsense. <laughs> Most and of it's copy and pasted too from like other yeah, hot takes. It's, yeah, it's just a copy and pasted, regurgitated thing that they saw that they're hoping gets retweeted or liked by more people than their last tweet. You know, it's mm. like 
from that to Instagram and seeing people, seeing like guys and girls that you know have nothing to do with the things that they post. They just find a cool quote, put it on their Instagram story and pretend like that's the way they live their life. And it's like, that, that has, why, why did you say this? You know that you don't believe, how, that you don't move like any of the things you just said. You know, sometimes you see the, the, the girls that are doing the most or the guys that are doing the most, like posting things that are just like, you know, I just want peace and my love, the people I love close to me. Just give me that. <laughs> like, you're it's like, like bro, no, you're, you're not peaceful. Stop this. <laughs> Be real. Like, when does, when does that start? When does that start? And I feel like for us to start that, someone's just going to have to start. <laughs> so this album was us trying to start at least taking some real looks at ourselves in the mirror. You know? And it's the most mature album that obviously you guys have put out. And it's like the most self, obviously the most self-reflecting too. I think so. And I think that that's like probably the coolest part of it. Cause like, if you like, if, if people been rocking with y'all since the beginning, mm -hmm. right. They like were able to see like the steady growth of like division as a duo and, and not just as a duo, but like emotionally Mm -hmm. Two and the different stages of your life. like I, I feel like it's like we've it's like we've lived with y'all in a way you know what I'm saying like we've seen like each stage of like your lives and what you've gone through and then now it's like the self reflecting part of what's of crazy and, one thing that I, I realize is crazy is um, <clears throat> there's pieces in working on my karma and there's things about it that if I was to get into like the whole like ideology of things working on my karma might even in some ways, as much as it's very much now and very much after a muse and a feelings, it's also like almost before September 5th in some ways to mm. me, as far as like chronologically the, the, men, the mental state. It's like, I almost want to get, I want to grow into the person that could sing the line or sing, you know, hallucinations and those things. But that person also has to start at the interlude to mm. even get to that place to be vulnerable like that again. You know, so it's almost, in a way, it's almost like a genesis at the same time as it's where it is right now. And, and to play into that, Working on Karma is actually the, the name of what our, our very first mixtape was that we were never put Before out. September 5th. Mm -hmm. Before September, before we ever did out. September 5th, any really? the morning after. The name of our original music that we started making together was called working on my karma and we just never put it out that's kind of crazy a bunch of songs from that just mm -hmm. ended up on september 5th so it's crazy to me that i hear it now and i'm like it's crazy because this guy here almost hasn't even got to the guy that could sing about you know the lion or sing about you know wanting to get married or you know whatever else because he's got work to do on himself still so yeah it's 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 kind of a, a mind fuck when i think about it but still <laughs> I was like, why are you talking about? I'm like, he's really trying to wrap yeah, his brain right, right, right. around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I'm sure you probably brought up of like it being like the unreleased name in other interviews. I've been trying not to watch all the other interviews because I was like, I want to go into I this one with like I don't think we said that. I don't know if we said that. Sure. Okay, cool. Because I've been trying like to thank. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to like because I because I wanted to like hear everything that y'all had to say about it without like watching the other interviews. Like mm. I wanted like the rawest, yeah. you know, and, and newest. Like <clears throat> so, I, I wasn't influenced by that. But I think that that's so crazy that like. That was the the name of the first. Was it? What was yeah. the reason why you guys changed it, or like it never came out? Was there any specific? Um, <laughs> it had other parts of my karma that I was trying to work <laughs> on <laughs> at the time, and um, uh, and no. and it had uh, do it well. It had the line. Do well the line. Um, September, September 5th. fifth, the song. And maybe one other record that was ended up on, on ended up on September fifth. Wow. Okay. So um, when we first had it, I think one of the first people we went and played it for was Forty, and this is be, before being signed to OVO. Um, and he was just like, "Yo, if you just cut off these songs here where you're talking about this and this and this, and, this, and you leave this, this is crazy." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So we kept whatever songs he said to keep, added a few to it, and that turned into September fifth. And then I used working on my karma as my Instagram name. Mm -hmm. And I only changed that this year. Right. So it's been, it's literally just been a constant theme yes. that we've always had amongst us. And we're just like, you know what? Let's just call this one working my karma finally, mm -hmm. get this out. And 
it, it, it fits and I think it's I think it's the right time. I think this is the time when people need to ingest that and put that out. So it's like really followed y'all like the course of y'all whole The way karma too. does. The way karma the way, does. The way karma does. Yeah. It'll come back around at any point. I don't even think we had the name division at first. At that time, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, we were just working. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> That's crazy. So it's like literally just come back around. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then now we now from here on, like, right, working on my karma, it kind of <laughs> feels like then that's like a new start then. Because like it, you've yeah. kind of closed, you've kind of closed a chapter of like changing your Instagram name, it being the name of the first project. And mm -hmm. then also like now, like, you know, taking that look at yourselves. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay. Yeah. Now in a way it's like it's a fresh start and kind of like a like this new beginning as like I don't know, it was maybe it's like cliche as that sounds, like it kind of, it is. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and it's crazy because yeah, now that you're saying that, when I look at at, the, at things and, you know, things going on even behind the scenes, like there's a lot of new beginnings happening with us right now. So it's dope. I'm, I'm excited about where we're about to take things and take R&B, take the culture, take our fans. Um, and, yeah, just trailblaze, you know? I want to, we want to keep leading in the way that we we do right i think one of my favorite fan tweets was like someone was like they said someone said r&b was dead and division said i bet <laughs> <laughs> and i think that was like that was one of my favorite things because it felt like like the way that this album hit and the way that it's been received too um i think like r&b album wise is like probably one of the best responses at least on us from a social media side and what i see yeah. on there like you know like i think that that's and a conversational point to what you guys have been saying about like the themes of the project and what we've been talking about like that's been like the coolest part because i don't i don't this is just me speaking from my opinion and my experiences like i don't remember like an r&b album recently that has like sparked these type of debates like this too yeah and conversations and that was that was what was important to us we didn't want to make music that just got treated like music you know, we like wanted, another release, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I didn't want a song. Oh, that's a dope song. You know, <laughs> I want to make songs that you remember because you remember the moment they impacted you, they made you think, they made you, you know, um, take a take a look at at whatever the topic really was. You know, I I want to be, I want to be like an artist where people say that music actually changed me you yeah. know there's a few art there's few artists like that really at the end of the day you know it's not that many but there's some where it's like that actually changed how i moved right as now a person. it feels like the girls in r&b have a lot more space to kind of get into some different topics and uh, mm -hmm. and like really <clears throat> like dive into things differently than the guys do because girls are saying some shit but for some reason, it feels like it's way more accepted from them, from the guys right now. So because guys, I think it's because guys are always feeling like we have to put ourselves out as a hero at the end of the day. We always have to be the one to, to win. You know, it's we have to sound cool. We have to still get the girl. Some type of you squeaky know? clean. Image yeah, too. you know, we kind of got to put that to it. That's that's why even like songs like. Um, like what's up with with jagged edge or yep. or hating where it's like i'm calling myself a hater like that's not the coolest thing to say you know what i mean no one likes a hater but it's being honest about damn i'm sitting here hating on this fact that this girl is actually moving on with somebody that's she probably deserves is probably doing all the things i wasn't doing you know i'm texting her she's hitting me back late. She's sending me back one word responses and it's not the same anymore. And she's probably moving on and I'm sitting here hating, you know, that's some real shit, but it's not, I don't know if everyone else wants to tackle talking about that because I think everyone wants to put themselves out as, you know, I'm the guy and I get the girl. I feel a little too much. So I wanted to be, to be honest about that. That might be, I, I'm just answering. That might be why it's different with the guys is because you know, the macho has to kick in at some point. Right. I think it's just like sometimes, like, I feel like you start to see it like a little bit more now where, you know, men are able to open up a little bit more in the music and be vulnerable. But those full, like, you know, it's like, it wasn't like a the step. The rappers of, are actually probably a little bit more vulnerable than the for singers. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, rappers, yeah, 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 definitely. The rappers definitely. Are, are laying out the pain <laughs> right now. They're all talking about the pain. 
I feel like the singers are kind of just, they're still trying to be the knight in shining armor. And sometimes to be that, you kind of got to show the, the dents in your armor, you know? Mm -hmm. Also kind of like, like what I was going to say was like, when it came, when it comes to like singers right now and kind of being, you know, like, and talking about these type of subjects, it feels like they've been kind of dipping their toes in the water, but this feels like, I right, we put in our, we put in, we going into the water. Like, you know what I'm saying? We put our feet mm -hmm. in the water, we getting, you okay. know what I'm saying? And also it's kind of like opening um, a door for like, you know, hopefully like people who come after this will be like, okay, cool. Like, Division made, like me, that. Yeah. Yeah, Division made like that. me feel comfortable to talk about this and shows that it works, right? Not just from like a, a personal perspective, like, oh, cool, I can get this out on a track, but like also from like a, oh, wow, people actually like this. You know what I'm saying? People like to listen to this. People like to be able to listen, you know, men can listen to music that helps them think about what they've done and help them be vulnerable in their own right and mm -hmm. not just be like, oh, you know, like the have to be the, the guy in the armor that saves the girl at the end of the day every single time. And that, that, that's key, too. I, I definitely wanted to make a project that it wasn't, it didn't alienate men. Because as R&B singers, yes, we know girls want to listen to it. They like the, you know, you're singing and all stuff like that. But I wanted to make a point of being like, I, 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 I'm the kind of artist and we're the kind of, um, you know, producer-artist combo that... Um, that guys can feel comfortable saying, I fuck with them, I fuck with, I fuck with Division, you know? There's, it's very few R&B acts that I think guys want to champion. It's always, there's always like one or two here or there, but um, it's much easier for girls to champion girl singers than it is for guys to just champion guy singers, really, you know? So I, I'm, I'm happy that guys and girls are both listening to it and being able to be like, yeah, that's, that's that shit right there. Yeah, that's that shit. And it's yeah. making me think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, y'all got a jagged edge club. Like, that's fucking, yeah. you know, and I, we keep saying it, right? And I, I, meant <laughs> keep, I meant to keep bringing it up, but like, that shit is fire. Like, con first of all, congrats on that, too. Yeah, you know so what I'm saying? I mean, the singing in the rain and all that <laughs> aside. <laughs> like, even with that, like, for you to, to have that on this project and also, you know, we're talking about the visuals and whatnot and like kind of bringing it in like this type of way, too, onto this type of one, like this newer type of R&B sound and this new step in a different direction with, you know, opening up, like, how, with this collab, like, how did you guys approach that one? Because that's what I'm really curious about, because I think it's one of the most unique. Um, we really just try to find a way to get the feeling that everybody keeps saying they're missing from R&B. Mm -hmm. Normally when they're saying that, they're referring back to, like, I don't know, early 2000s, 90s, trying to get that feeling, but still making it feel like 2022, 2023, you know? And working with JD, B. Cox, those guys were amazing at letting us come into their world, but still giving us the freedom to just like, do what you gotta do, and you just let us know, you know, where we can get in, where we fit in. Mm. And because of that, it made it such like an easy transition from all the classic sounds and things that they were doing to the new and fresh things that we've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of worked. I think you blended it perfectly too. Thank you, thank you. Like I just, I feel, it, it's funny that you're like talking about like that, you know, what people were missing. But I think, I think even like whether you're talking about R&B or hip hop, right? I think the one thing that people always forget is that music is like supposed to change. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get too stuck on a certain era. Um, even like, you know, it doesn't really matter the age range either. I'm sure like people 20 years from now will be saying that about this era of hip hop and R&B or whatever, but people get too caught up in an era and then I think it's just like, they don't allow themselves to be exposed to new things. And I think that's kind of like one of the biggest disservices that people can like be as a listener is mm -hmm. like not allow themselves to be like open to, yeah. you know, the new R&B or the new hip hop and, you know, cause they're just so stuck in the, oh, but the early, the late '90s, early 2000s, and it's like yeah, that was great, and it's never gonna not be iconic. But like, there's some really great shit out now that people yeah. need to like. That was, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like let it let it be 20 years ago, and what's now? You know, and I think we found a great balance of that. People mm -hmm. love how we kind of remind them of these things they grew up loving and have been missing, yeah. but it still feels like current like it doesn't feel like throwback music you know yeah i was at like an r&b party like two weeks ago and it's and it's funny that we're talking about this because i was just like yo can y'all like play some like 
New, new division, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I like, and I told my boy, I'm like, well, yeah, new shit, new div- yeah, obviously new division, yeah. but like I was, I was in there, I'm like, I'm like, yo, there's mad shit out right now that y'all can play. Like obviously y'all play like you know whatever R and B record that could go number one on the chart. Sure, great, that's cool. But like there's so much shit out right now that people are listening to that people fuck with that I'm like sometimes I don't know if it's like a miscommunication between like DJs and the music or you know maybe it's because like oh well we know that they're gonna love. This song, X, Y, and Z song, yeah. right? So we're just gonna keep playing that shit. Mm-hmm. But like, people also love so much new music too that I think it's like so that's also part of like the the um, I forgot. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but kind of like the missing link between like okay, the old and the new. It's for like, sure. Like if you go to a a party that's playing rap, yeah, chances are ninety eight percent of it is within like the last five years. If you go to a party that's playing R and B, chances are ninety percent of it is from like. 15 years or more. Yeah. If not you more know. than 90%. Too, yeah. <laughs> you know? like, well, like yeah. 90, it's like 99%. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so for whatever reason, the way we all view R&B is so stuck in like such a specific time mm. that we need to remember like, yo, there's, there's dope shit happening now. Like, you know what it is too? It, music is, music becomes more and more important as you make memories to it. Mm. Right? And I actually believe that where we are as a society, our attention spans, our just how much information gets thrown at us, it's hard to, just the same way it's hard to remember things, it's hard to create new memories to the things that are happening now because everything is, hap- is coming at us in these 10, 15 second loops of just new things every 10 seconds, every, every, Every hour, it's some new headline, some new trending, something, some new anything. That it's it's hard for things to stick. Stick. Mm. It's it's hard. It's more hard for things to stick than they were before. So I think that for us to to work work against that or work towards that, I think is is going to take is going to take things like the DJs making a point of that. You know, it's going to take a things a radio making a point to that. Like we're going to take these records and we're going to embed them in people's lives now like if you take a song like uh boot up by lma yeah. that song is huge largely in part to djs djs were like yo let's really run with this record the song was out for almost a year before it really like blew up mm-hmm. and then djs really embraced it and it took it somewhere but if the djs aren't doing that and we're not hearing these songs in places that we go to like have fun and enjoy our our, our people or whatever you're not going to connect those songs to whenever you're thinking of like, oh, I remember during, you know, 2019, I remember what was happening then, this song was playing. You're gonna connect it to the Future record, the Little Baby record, mm. the Drake record, mm-hmm. the, you know, like all the other records, but it's never gonna be the R&B record because if the R&B records aren't playing They're in those playing. spaces, it's, it's know, not it's being fed to you there. like that. Right. So yeah, yeah, you don't remember that. Like I vividly remember when um, March Madness dropped. Yeah. Like I was going crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean, like I remember that it was playing like crazy. It play and it still does every time you go to the club. Now you're still probably gonna hear March Madness play one time. And everyone's gonna go nuts. It's because we've attached ourselves to that music. But now R and B kind of gets placed in this like vibey underground space where it doesn't it doesn't play outside, and so it's harder to create to create real new life experiences to this stuff when it's not playing in your just everyday cycle of life. Yeah. So I definitely, you know, all DJs out there, you know, if you need packs, if you need <laughs> drops, whatever you need, like holler at us, holler at the artists. Like let's let let let's let's make music great again, I think is it should be, you know, a goal. Yeah. Sure. It's a great thing that you bring up the DJs too. Cause um, shout out my DJ, shout out DJ Will for my show on Fridays. Cause shout out we, DJ Will. We be, I promise you, swear on my life, I, you can ask John. John be at the show. Yep. We be spinning division, right? Facts. Appreciate Come on. you. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm, I'm big on like I always said. I haven't done it yet, but I was always one of those people that was like, yo, I'm just gonna throw a party. I'm gonna say, yo, you can't play anything if it's not from like the last ten years. Mm. It's gotta be last ten years to now. You know what I'm saying? Like play new shit. And I'm big on like just getting those new like the new songs into rotation. Like you talk about like Mar- I'm trying to think of like a song that came out recently or like within the last couple of years that people go crazy for whenever it's played in the club. I can't R&B song or 
R and B, R and B or hip hop. R and B or hip- wow, you said LMA. Obviously, that's like within the last five years. Mm-hmm. But I'm, thinking, I'm trying to think of hip hop, but it's so few and in between too. It'd be maybe be like one a year that ends up staying in rotation every year. What song? No, but I mean like, well, I mean that's brand brand new. You know what I'm saying? That hasn't had the time to marinate yet. Right, like, like dreams and nightmares is still going crazy because we remember what it was that like that yeah. time. Yeah. You know, we were still taking music in like that at that time. So I just think that people need to, we, the world needs to just slow down for a second. Like, we don't need this much information from yeah. every single walking human being. <laughs> Legit. Like, there used to be like, we go here for media or for news. We go to this place. Now everybody is a news reporter. Every person has their own media station that they have to continuously feed. Yeah. And that's just, it's frying our brains, I think, at this point, you know? So I think that's part of the problem. But, you know, I think that we can help reverse it if we join hand in hand with our our DJs and our, our radio programmers and everybody kind of makes a, 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 a concentrated effort to highlight the dope shit that's happening now right mm-hmm. and that's what we're doing here you know what i'm saying what song y'all want me to play this friday off the album is it at a club whatever no uh, well it's at my, on, my, on my show on my radio show. on your radio show okay yeah whatever song y'all want so give what them, song on the radio what song stuck out the most to you what song this man i love the jagged edge song so that's that one for me is like that's my that's my that's my shit right now but it's wait you know what hey rob <laughs> which rob. yeah let rob pick <laughs> oh no, my god! <laughs> no, nah, because Rob's been talking about this. Rob, look at the policy. <laughs> I've been hearing a lot. We've been hearing a lot about that record, to be honest. The policy joint. So maybe give that a run, and we'll see how it does. Whatever y'all want me to play, I'll yeah. play it. I got yeah. y'all. You know what I'm saying? We talking about we talking about getting DJs to play new shit and yeah. kind of move shit forward. Yeah. Yeah, but it was definitely a few that? DJ friendly records on that on that on this project for sure. Um, last time with Blue. Mm. Um, Blue is an incredible artist too, yeah, by yeah. the way. Blue's take it slow, crazy. take it slow. Where this guy found the craziest way to flip a John Legend sample, um, and hating, hating. Those are all records that mm-hmm. definitely are definitely super DJ friendly. If you need some up temples, but um, policy. I think that's another thing that changed in R and B. R and B used to be at the same tempo as rap. Now it's not. So when you have a good rap set, it you it becomes like a drop in. in the night if you switch over to R&B. Mm. So that's a good point too. Fly. That's a good point too. I think like I think Hayden. Yeah, Hayden. Hayden. Right. I think we should go. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Hayden. All right. I think. <laughs> oh, the, there's this funny ass clip of uh, Jim Jones from like two years ago on Angie's show, and he goes, he goes, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a natural born hater. And he's like, uh, he's like, I see how great DJ Khaled is doing. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> so I think I think we should gotta go with Hayden. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Run hating. Well, I wanna say first and foremost, congratulations on this incredible body of work. Thank guys. you. You Thank know you. what I'm saying? I'm sure you guys have been hearing that all all week, but congratulations. Uh we know recently it went number I saw y'all post when it went number one. Yeah. Um, so congrats on that. I look forward to seeing what the uh what the new beginning for y'all is. I'm sure it'll be a little bit of time before that because we want to enjoy this project properly. Um, but congratulations again. Thank you guys for being here, say, taking the time out of y'all day. Um, I appreciate you guys. And uh, Hayden, this Friday, we're going to play that shit. We're going to run that shit to the ground. We're going to play that shit like five times. Yeah. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have, I don't got no bombs. I do thunder strikes. So we're going to do. We gonna, <laughs> we gonna put like the thunder booms in between and we're going to keep running that shit back. Um, but before we get out of here, uh, I know y'all got y'all solo grams. You got the new name on the gram too. Mm-hmm. Uh, let the people know that they, where they can follow you. Anything else you want to let them know? Now is the time to do it. Uh, your camera's right there. Your yeah. camera's right there. Yeah, man. Check us out. Uh, any social media platform. That's DVSN. That's Division. It's just a cool way to spell it for all the people that are still confused about it. <laughs> or, all the, or all the new fans, you know. Welcome. Uh, new album, Working On My Karma, is out now. Uh, currently streaming, you know, the number one R and B album out right now. So talk your shit. You know, get on get on that and get to the conversation and hopefully, you know, put out something better from yourself into the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. You just said it all. <laughs> uh, I, I was I was telling you to plug your personal Instagram. Oh my personal and my personal gram is um Daniel Division. So that's D A N I E L D V S N. My personal Instagram my personal Instagram is nineteen eighty five, the word nineteen, the number eighty five underscore. Easy. 
Go get the Easy. new album out now. Go run it up. It's an incredible body of work. Sit with it. Think about yourself. Think about what you've done. Think about how you could work on your karma. Go follow them. Go show them some love. Go show them support. Love is free. Support is free. But child already knew that. Till next time, On the Radar Division, we out. Bow. Bow.